Yes, yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. The back page, we are here again. Come on. What are you man saying? We got Sam, what are you saying? You know, I'm just here. I'm happy to just be doing live recordings again. Come on, come on. You know, with lockdown coming. Mm. Ha, fam. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Boris, brav. Well, pattern up, Boris, man, because you're messing up everyone's everyone's life right now, man. For real, for real. Boris and Oli. Well, anyway, <laughs> listen. Man put, them, <laughs> man put them in the same category. Bruv, these men, they, they both don't know what they're doing. They're, in, they're out of depth, man. That's true. They're in the deep end that they don't know how to swim. <laughs> Let's leave it. Let's leave it. Jerry, what are you telling me? Yeah, no, I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm back on furlough. So, mm. you get me? Like you man said, lockdown part two. PS5. I mean, you man played FIFA 21. Nah, but nah. I heard it's dead. It's Have you yeah, played I'm this? T- I haven't touched it. I can't I've lie. Ret- I'm retired. I don't play FIFA the last time, I, I guess... The last time I played FIFA... I think it was like maybe FIFA Don't say that, 2018. Okay. I grew up on pro, innit? So I yeah, can't really yeah, appreciate yeah. FIFA. Yeah. No, nah, but after, like, I'll say what? What was it? Like pro nine, eight? Everyone, everyone made the switch. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, I made thing. the switch. But the only reason I made the switch is because all oh, everyone's playing FIFA, innit? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. You can't and be left didn't, yeah. And the time when FIFA got good, I swear um, all the pro people created it. Yeah, 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 yeah. They got all the pro yeah, developers, so, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, the last time I played FIFA was in 2018. Like, mm. once, if I do get the PS5, the only thing I'm getting is COD and fighting games and platform games. Okay. That is it. No 2K? No, you know, it's 2K. <laughs> I try to play it. But it's weird. It's, the buttons are weird. It's to, weird. To, yeah, yeah. You probably just have to get used to it. You need to get used to it. <laughs> you know them Americans. They Bav. bang it yeah. out. They love it. Like 2K is like their FIFA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's different, man. Me, yeah, I'll just stick to, to football because all these other sports games are a bit mad. Have you ever tried to play Madden? Yeah, yeah. I used nah. to love Madden. Remember, remember, Jerry? Wow. Remember when I bought my PS um, to your house when you were moving when you were in um, flat ten? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. We, um, and we played Madden at that time. Bruv. It was actually quite cold. That one's a bit mad still. But yes, let's get straight into it. And this one is going to be a bit of a sensitive and a bit of a deep one because it's it's something that we've touched on quite a few times on the back page. We've mentioned it and we've highlighted it because we feel like it's such an important issue and a lot of the time it goes like under the covers. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't speak about it. And it's only now that, you know, mental health, mental health issues have become more kind of exposed and people are starting to see that yeah this is actually a big problem that you know that we're hearing some people start to speak about it but um i'm not sure if any of you guys saw there was a very touching and a very sad um story in the news in this past past week or a bit and it was about a youth player he was ex-youth player used to play for the man city academy i think he was there up until the under 16s if i'm correct or 17 under 17 under 17 and he got released and due to this, this kind of came with depression and um, and it led to him taking his, taking his life, which was very shocking. I was reading the story and even when I think about it now, it's like, it's, it's very mad. It's very, very mad. And it's very touching. It's very touching. And I feel like all of us here, because we've all kind of played football and we all understand the pressures. Mm. I feel like, Sam, you're probably, you've probably played football at the highest level out of all of us that are here. So yeah. I feel like you will be able to kind of express more about like the pressures of playing in football and how what that can do to you. Yeah, obviously, I think that in like 16, 17, that's when you're trying to get your scholar. Mm. So if people don't know what a scholar is, it's your... Um, two year before you could potentially get a pro so you're not necessarily a pro but you're not necessarily a a schoolboy you're you're just uh back in the days they used to call it apprenticeship or whatever okay um but obviously with more money being pumped into um the league and stuff players are getting peas um so it does give a chance for kids to get their their two-year scholar before the pro um so to even try and get that and knowing that at a a young age you have to fight to get a two-year before getting a pro it it can be um it can be nerve-wracking because you're you're trying to fight for your place knowing that you may not even be the type of person that's starting all the time 
mm. and your and your peers that are guaranteed maybe their their scholar they've got it and they're still banging ball do you understand so i don't know i think when it comes to um kids getting released um i would love to bring in another like a coach to come and like really like talk about how they pick um guys to get their scholar and stuff like that because i i feel like you know even if you're not going to get your your scholar at a, at a club at like man city maybe they should in some in some way help you to maybe find another club or put things in place to make you not feel how the young man felt in order for him to take his life but then it also it goes to now ask a question as 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 harsh or it might sound is that weren't the parents you know picking up on his the mood swings or the yeah. signs that you know my son isn't actually himself since he's been released from a top club and to be fair i think being released from a club like Man City that would probably get you down mm. thinking right is my life over am I going to get you know the next big break at, at a top club mm. but the only thing is that I find really heartbreaking is that at such a young age someone thinks that their whole world is over just because they're not at the club that they wanted to be at yeah you know, I've been released by clubs and stuff like that. It is heartbreaking, to be honest. Like, that's one thing that I can never take away from, like, young footballers. It's very heartbreaking knowing that you want to be a footballer, play at the highest level possible, but I, for whatever reason it could be, you're just not going to be at that club. So I do understand the, the, the headspace that the young man might have been in. Mm. But I also feel like his family had to read the signs at least. And maybe I think clubs have to do better to, um, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, maybe like care or like yeah, kind of or reassure. Sure, yeah, that's the word. Like reassure them that even though you're not gonna play for us. Yeah. anytime soon or you're not going to do your two year here or your your career here there's always going to be other opportunities mm. but sadly for this young man in question and we're, and we're talking about it's just too late and mm. that's why I keep on saying that I feel like clubs need to start putting things in place for the youth for, for maybe from the time they have their scholar to under 23s mm. you know they need to put something in place whether it might be having a counsellor or or someone or someone that's in and around where they can just come and just come in and chat to so that someone and feel better or find ways to work with these young people because it's hard man it's hard knowing that maybe you're probably 17 and you see your other footballing friends maybe got their scholar they're on peas and you're at home praying that you know um someone will take you uh sorry to cut you off no, please, let me this oh. is this is a, an article mm -hmm. um so let me read what they said i think the city the city board yeah what you set up his name's his name's jeremy uh whist whist mm -hmm. they said whiston turned 18 earlier this month City had informed him that he would not, not be offered a scholarship in December 2018. Mm -hmm. So they organised trials at other clubs and, as with all players, offered pastoral care both before and after his departure. That's what a designated member of operation staff supports player through their exits. Mm -hmm. mm. Said so that City. Yeah. So obviously, so then therefore, there were things in place for him because to be honest I'm happy that you read that because I was even I was thinking to myself because I, I remember when I was at Cardiff and I think there were the second years at the time when I was the first year and they were getting um, told if they were going to get their pro or not yeah. 
So there were some people that didn't get their 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 pros, but they got given a list of um, teams that are looking for you know um, players or whatever or trials that are coming up. So I'm happy that City did um, do some type of due diligence to possibly help him. Um, do you not think that they could have given him more help or more stability? Do you know, I'm going to play devil's advocate here because, like, I hear a lot of people saying that, yeah, clubs should do more, but what is more? What is more? Because you don't really... It's, it's kind of a tricky subject because you don't know how the player is feeling. Again, you don't really know um, if... No, we that like, we don't know and the clubs don't know how bad um being released has made that person feel. So the, so it's it's all good to tell someone, ah, oh, yeah, jump back on the on the horse go again. But again, factors are into it. We don't know how long the boy was at City for. For one. So if he was there from a young, young age, age and that's all he's known, then it can be hard to maybe transition yourself to go to another club and be like, okay, I want to be part of this set. I don't know, innit? Um, but maybe, yeah, like I'm trying to say, maybe um, have someone that's designated and just call them and be like, how are you doing today? Or whatever, How like, have you been going to trials or whatever? Just check up on them. And if, and if they haven't, just talk to them and always just check in until they're ready to go to trial. But continue before the camera, you know. <laughs> the camera just interrupted. Yeah, madness. <laughs> but yeah, I was saying, like, even going based on what you're saying now, is that the job of clubs? Because, like, I'll liken it to, like, let's say someone's, like, in school, you lost a job or something mm-hmm. like that. Let's is say Love Island. Role? Love Island. That's a perfect Jeez. example. Mm. Is it, is it, yeah, exactly. Is it the role of like the company or wherever it is to provide that kind of care for the person or? But okay, but I think we, I think where we have to now look at the situation is how old the person is. That's as true. much as people can say, oh, once you're 18, you're an adult, this and that. Personally, when you're not an adult yeah. at 18, yeah. you're still fragile. Your, your mind is still fragile. You're still mm. learning how to even control your emotions. You're still learning how to um, express yourself. Express but, yourself. Yeah. but regardless of whether you're an adult or not, even adults commit suicide. No, for, I hear that. For losing their job yeah. or, or being in the limelight but too I'm soon. Talk, but I'm, yeah. I'm talking about the ages of 17 yeah. to 18. Like Love Island, I mean, you know. Do you know how much of them have committed suicide? No, I yeah. hear that. But, Bear of them. But again, is that to, is that because uh, it's, I don't even wanna, it's, 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 it's techie techie because yeah. I don't wanna, I don't wanna try and place fault on the victim because yeah. it's not, I don't even know how to, it's, it's, a, it's a techie one, but. But you know, because of that, yeah, mm-hmm. they put into place where ITV now have a duty of care to look oh, wow. after all the contestants after they've no. come out of the show. Yeah, and to be fair, I think that it that should have been in place from the time these shows starts. Like the shows like Big Brother and all of that, these are the kind of things that need to happen. Like even if like when um you know when Rooney did that um skill, oh, skill school, school yeah, yeah. like that skill school thing or or when um Chelsea did football icon, yeah. like you have to put these things in place because these football for certain man. Football is is all certain man have in this life. Do you understand? Like even though it's some, like you can say, oh, you can do this and you can do that, but sometimes in life, certain man are just good at football. That is their thing. So imagine that being taken away from you and thinking, I don't know what I'm gonna do next. Because I was in that when I stopped kicking ball, I was in a like for a good two, three years. Mm. I was in no man's land, bro. Thinking, what am I gonna do? Because, I, like, think about it, guys. You spent your whole life training, training getting physique right. Or you're going training week in, week out, playing games every Saturday, maybe on a on a weekday, maybe you're doing this your whole life. And then at one moment, it's just gone. 
mm. come. Now, yes, he can possibly go to another club and someone will probably take him. But at that time in his mental, in, 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 in his frame of mind, he's thinking, this is it. Like, raw, like, do I have to go to, do I have to go to college now? Do I have to go to uni? Do I have to get a job? Mm. And again, we have to realise as well, some of these players might have been on P's for their age that someone their age hasn't seen before or, or even on. So again, it could be a lifestyle thing as well, thinking, raw, maybe I can't keep up with my football mates. Because everyone needs to understand, you see, in this football world, the way them look going about peas and whatever, you you would think that these men are rappers, bro. <laughs> the way they do, like, do you understand? Like, it's mad, the stories that you would hear. So it could be different things, in it? And someone being 18 or 17, what's it doing on their mental? So I think that even that like, down to like shows and all of these, they should put things into place to now help people transition themselves for their next phase in life. Mm. Because again, when you go into like shows like you're saying Jerry, Love Island, Big Brother, all of these things, your life ain't gonna be the same once, you can't go back to normal life anymore. Yeah, it's true. You can't, you can't, say you can't. worked in Sainsbury's and you went on Love Island. <laughs> can't, you can't, you. <laughs> like you can't, you can't be like, oh yeah, I wanna go back to my life now. You have to now adjust to now being famous or for you for people to be spotting you yeah on road mm. now coming to now uh this young man again is like mm. it's just been told mm. to him yeah you know that we don't need you do you think that should be something fifa should do as a whole as a or the government no this, this is nothing to do with the government i think this is strictly to do with the football associations. Because again, we can't pick and choose when we want, um, you know, the government to time in or when we want FIFA to do whatever. I think this is strictly uh, down, to clubs. down to clubs and and UEFA, FIFA, um, the FA. So now, if you want to now get some type of advice from the government or whatever, to be like, oh, how can we now improve um, to get people that are well equipped to help our young people what's the best way to do it then by all means do that but I don't think that the government have enough on their plate already to now be dealing with COVID and then now coming to try and that's their job though that's I what hear they get paid you, for but they ain't trying to pay <laughs> but I hear what you're trying to say expenses. but they're not even trying to feed kids that that need free school meals bro so and then we're gonna come and ask them to now deal with young footballers uh mental state I I don't I wouldn't trust that person let me ask a question do you feel like clubs kind of so the way I've seen it is that clubs kind of prepare you for the possibility of you not making it. So from the beginning and from like the, the many assessments that they give you all throughout <laughs> the year, they kind of do kind of let you know that not everyone's gonna make it. So is that not in a sense kind of trying to prepare the the player for the possibility of them not, you know, um, getting their scholar or? I hear you, I, I you are right. But I mean, how do you tell a young person that, okay, yeah, cool. You're, I mean, not even how do you tell a young person, how do you expect a young person to kind of come to terms mm. with them not playing football, like them not playing football for the club that they really want to play yeah. football for? That's the hard thing, do you understand? It's yeah. just like when you see the most nerdiest of nerds in a in GCSE, men are crying because they got an A, not even an A star. Yeah. Men are crying because they were meant to get an A star, but they got an A. Mm. So how do you, so if we're now taking it down to that small scale of, so that an A, yeah. give me an A in GCSE. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm gassed. Mm. But at what point where it's, it's not the person, but the person's parent? the yeah. child's parents I feel like parents them people are, that wanted yeah. A-stars it was the parents you know that That's, were onto the kids yeah. if you don't get A-star <laughs> but then again and then they got then, an A they're crying because they know when they go back up and show their parents this is where it's we, a wrap then this is where we have to start now looking at um, parents 
and stuff like that and and ask how involved are you in your child's child. career yeah and even life in general yeah, yeah in life, life yeah do you understand because surely you you must see your child moping around or or even if he's he might try and mask it you still need to ask questions are you okay yeah. um how do you feel and stuff like that you know what I'm trying to say? So it's a techie one because I don't want to, like, I don't want to respect anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. anyone mm. say, oh, like, it's your fault because you haven't, you know, tried to sort yourself out. Because again, you know, especially. We don't, this, we don't know the ins and outs. We don't out. know the ins and yeah. outs. And even the most sane person who's so aware of life can it's come crashing like, down yeah, like that. Yeah, Do you understand? Yeah. Like, this lockdown is, is proof mm-hmm. yeah. that the most. The people that are are the most active are now questioning their mental health or they're going through stuff. Yeah. So it's it's a very tricky one. And I just feel like, yeah, I think the FA, UEFA, whoever that needs to do better in terms of making sure that these players are well looked after. Maybe for, I'll maybe say six months. Cause I feel I'll get like, you must, I'll give you maybe six months to try and get back on your feet and try and do something at yeah. least. Do you understand? I, I don't think that clubs should just be like, okay, well, since you're not, uh, you know, a city player or you're not that's this it. kind of player, then that's it. It's, mm. you know, it's a bit mad. I think we have to be very sensitive um, to these kind of players. Yeah. I feel like the, the most important thing is that these conversations are, are being had and people are uh, allowed to speak out about it because no one should ever feel like um, no one is not yeah, that anyone's that it's only them like no one's gonna listen to them mm-hmm. there's always somebody that will listen to whatever you're going through so anybody that's listening if you know any of your loved ones that might be going through something or if you don't just reassure your friend reassure your brother mm-hmm. your sister reassure them that listen if you ever want to speak I'm here for you to speak to but quickly before we, we move on from this Sam you were in a similar situation where I say you kind of you were released from a team mm-hmm. what were what was your like coping mechanisms how did you kind of get yourself out of kind of the dark place that you say that you would say you were in um, if you remember to be honest because i was like so when i actually like proper like gave like stop football completely i think i was like 21 22 so i was just trying to just get on with life but even though i knew that that massive thing that yeah. I had is a there's a massive void that I have to now um, kind of replace in it. That like I have to replace football with something, and it took me a long time to find what I wanted to do. Well, so it's hard. It's trust me, it's so hard. But I think I don't know. It's a weird one because for yeah. me, luckily because I wanted to work with children, I kind of really knew that I wanted to do something. So I was trying to go into that direction, in it. Mm-hmm. For other man, like I'm trying to say, it's just football for you. Yeah. Do you understand? So it's like, how do you now tell someone that is that football that's that's their thing? Oh, maybe you should try and do this, or maybe you should try and do that, because in their head they're thinking this is, this is, this is it. Because it, it. I was that same guy. I was that same kid. Mm. Like what? When I left school, what my mum was trying to forced me to go to college and all of that i wasn't trying to hear that i'm saying mm. i'm not trying to i'm not trying to become a yeah. college what are you talking about i'm trying to do this football thing like don't know mm. about you but do you understand what yeah. i'm trying to say like as yeah. much as parents can be like oh you need a plan b you're thinking look if i'm taking a plan b then that means i'm not i am not believing in myself yeah i have to go for it do you understand do you know what I got dropped is because I was just a mad, I was a madman, and I was just doing, <laughs> and I was just doing crazy things. You understand that got that that got me released. So, so I can to a degree understand it, but again, he might not. The kid in question may not have even done anything. He's probably just got released on based on ability. Do you understand? So, it's it's different. It's in it's different circumstance for different people. I, again, I think families, friends, like you're saying, people around you, your support um, system, they have a massive part to play in yeah. in trying to help you get back on that horse. Yeah. So, once again, our thoughts are with um, 
with the family, the loved ones, yeah, and Jeremy. Man. And once again, anyone that might be in a similar situation, just know that there's always somebody there to listen to you. Don't forget, yeah, man. Just don't be afraid to reach out to people because there are people in in similar situations than you that know or can give you some type of tool mm. to move forward and and get on with life. But yeah, man. R.I.P. Yeah. Thank you.